Alright guys, we just talked about the after effect. And I really want to paint this portrait, the bigger picture, uh, to your life, to what you're going through in terms of idealizing what it is to contend for the faith. And I'm going to use this example that I just used and kind of really get into it in terms of appealing to the gladiator who goes into the arena. And we talked about how if you can picture putting on not only spiritually but really picture this portrait to the bigger picture of your life of what it is to put on the full armor of God physically. What's the what's the character difference? What is the the, the, the process in order that a, a an individual is built up in our Lord. Now, I talked about how the admirer from John 6.45 will come to Christ, but, will, but is not expecting uh, an exacting change, a cut into one's heart that will bring about change. No, that's not what the admirer exists for. The admirer really wants to spectate and remain a part of the crowd. But when God calls us to be chosen, He is giving us a qualitative difference from that of the admirer. He is now saying, I'm going to build your character to be of the will and the life that I'm going to give you. And so, think about this, this gladiator who, who puts on the full armor of God, not only mentally and spiritually, but now you're seeing the physical armor of, of, of what the gladiator's putting on. He understands that spiritually, his will is no longer his own. His life is no longer his own. Um, how he conducts himself is never his own. How, now that the character has been built for the battle, how do we approach life with this type of character? And usually the world is offensed from this type of character. And now it's not that the gladiator is just putting on the full armor of God for the battle in the arena, in the physical arena. But now... God is appointing us to the battle of this life, the battle of this carnality. So, the gladiator doesn't think about his life being lost physically. He knows that his life is already not his own in the spirit. It is of God's will now. It is of God's spirit that he now has eternal life. So, he goes into the, the arena full armor of God on without expectation of what is his own anymore but that the whole reason for the battle it, it belongs to God now the victory he knows that the victory is already God's he knows that whether he goes into this, this arena and his life is lost physically he knows that to to die to Christ is is to gain which means if he dies in the physical, it's still a gain to God. It's still a gain for the fact that he has eternal life and he knows it uh, with assurance. He knows it um, through all the trials and through the fact that he's been called. He knows by confirmation that when he stands on, on the rock that God has set, has built through, through, through the, the drawing process, that he doesn't go to fight a battle that is, is physical at all anymore. It's really spiritual. It's already won on God's part. It's already lost in the flesh. It's already lost in the carnal. So now the gladiator, he goes in, and the reason that the admirer is, he admire and see what happens is these perps, these spectators, the crowd, they admire this type, the God type, so much more because this type he still has a testimony which is 
not of this world, but for the fact that he has remained alive through many various battles, it has even made them more of, ad of, 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 of an admiration to, to his existence now. Okay? So, to them, they, they, they want to see if, he can, if, he, if he's going to die in the physical, you know? But to the gladiator, to the things that the admirer holds true, deeply, you know, the emotion, the human emotion, the gladiator doesn't hold that, that human resonance anymore. Uh, there is a, a, a rejoice to the struggles that have built a character so devoid of the earthly now, so devoid of the worldly that the gladiator, he goes in with a straight face now. Now the battle, going into battle is a, is you put on that armor, you're going to do the business of God. You're going to war for God. You're going to, you're going as a witness to the battle. Okay, and I know I'm I'm kind of trying to allude to the microcosm of uh, 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 of say the macrocosmic existence of the world, but it, it helps compartmentalize um, what we're going through in order that we can take from what's been refined and externalized away from us, and 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 it goes back to the world, whatever it is. And God now uses what He's refined in us to not only take into battle, not only see the battle as a microcosm, but now to, once again, the, this whole world becomes, uh, it goes from the physical battle uh, within an arena or a stadium to, to the spiritual. Now you can see, you can superimpose, you can take... And you can you can supplant that into the spiritual battle, the spiritual war, the spiritual witness of God to the whole world, to the macrocosm of the world. So now you're seeing, we go in with full confidence, knowing that we've been through these battles. God has drawn us from John six forty four to coming to Christ in John six forty five, and we're not. We're no longer on the milk of babes, as babes are, but we're now into the, f the full flourishing of our fruit that we're bearing, or the cross that we're bearing. We know that this is business time. This is that spiritual maturity that God is talking about. Um, yeah, we may smile through this suffering, through this persecution, through this trial, but God has something better for us. He's disciplining us and refining us in this way to know that as a father loves his child uh, he's letting us know that we are his children uh, we are called to be chosen okay and what I mean called to be chosen he's called us to the opportunity but he's also what has remained in the after effect is the fact that we still have free will so his intent for us in all this is to apply that free will to the direction of who he is to us in relating the the, the drawing part of coming to him uh, in respect to not only the how not only the why but now um, the importance of understanding that we must live this we must supplant the old the old nature of the old creation and live out the new nature the new creation Okay, and this is something God has done for us, because He loves us. Now, He wouldn't do it for them of the crowd, the spectator, okay, because they are not called to this opportunity to live out what it is to be chosen of God. And this is in all confidence, not in and of ourselves, not to lean on our own understanding or lean back to something of an old or something of a sinking foundation but now to now to know that in this process to lose on our behalf is to win on God's behalf to know that as we will be raised up on the last day we know that um, as we stand in a sense if we fall we're actually falling right on top back onto the firm foundation of what God has supplanted within us in the spirit so now Take everything that I've told you about the physical, the gladiator entering the arena with a stoic demeanor, the full armor of God, 
the full for propensity knowing that in and of his own right as a gladiator, his position, okay, he's about the business of God. He's And, and so in, in this respect, the gladiator is about the a business of, 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 of fighting and surviving and knowing what that entails, okay? So God has supplanted us with something greater now. But now it's our choice. He's given us the free will. Um, he's kept the free will for us to hopefully with his intent and what's, what, what he's doing for us behind the scenes and directly in our lives showing us, hey, apply this free will toward me. This is the full completion of who you are to be come in this life. I am drawing you through this refiner's fire so that you come and you are made uh, as a character in right standing, righteousness with God. Okay? And this is the whole premise of, uh, of why we must come with this proven demeanor as chosen targeted individuals and not just admirers who are parading around a Christian title. Because we see what these, the, these, the admirer really wants something from the gladiator that the gladiator doesn't need. The gladiator doesn't need the crowd. The crowd needs to keep fueling the crowd in admiration. So, the closer that the admirer can try to use the chosen one and bring that one to the death of this world, the more that crowd is fueled to its own illusion that it has in terms of that place for the gladiator. Okay? But the gladiator knows in and of, of himself that he does not need the crowd. But then again, the gladiator knows that he, he's, he could be under the curse, just like a lot of the, the birthright are still under the curse, and that the, that, that the spectator, the spirit of Esau, is still in control. And so this is something, know this, T.I.s, that as God is refining you, and he's letting these things go from you, these scales that are falling from your eyes, this veil that's being lifted, this veil, the, these eyes to see that the veil is, is also being seen through, um, that, that we only need God, okay? We don't need the admirers. We don't need the crowd. And so, hence, we've come to this place where we've have, we have understanding that we were not born for the crowd. Hence, we were not born for this world. We were only born to it. We were born to go back to God and return home. Uh, but God is getting us there. It is by His mercy, not, not, by, not by our own will, nor by those who run, okay, but by His mercy, okay? And what verse is that again? What verse is that? That would be Romans 9, 16. Don't quote me on that, but quote me on that. I believe it's Romans 9, 16. Um, so I want to leave you guys with that. It, it's, it's this impact that the Holy Spirit just says, you know what, get into it, show the listener show that the chosen TIs why they're why they're chosen. Assist them in giving in helping them uh, understand the reason for having a great testimony. Because with a great testimony, a great faith will flourish. All right, and you will have. Now, if I if I, I'm just really here to help paint that bigger portrait of the bigger picture of what we TIs are going through by way of God's mercy, by way of God's appointment to, to the understanding that we may not boast in and of ourselves, but we may boast in the glory of God. All right, guys, till the next one. Be encouraged. Never stop being encouraged. This is a choice, and God has placed us here so that we may have free will to choose Him. All right? Take the leap of faith, guys, today. And know that God has a purpose in this. And He loves us. So, stay tuned. I love you guys. Godspeed.